Welcome to the Corporate Knights Podcast. In this episode, Yann Martel, best-selling author of Life of Pi, and his new novel, Beatrice and Virgil, and Edward Bertinsky, award-winning photographer behind Manufactured Landscapes, and his new book, Oil, talk about using art to shift our environmental perspectives. I reached Yann Martel over the phone at his home in the Canadian prairies. But we were talking about a much different landscape, the cloud forest of the Andes Mountains. Yann had traveled there in 2009 with Cape Farewell, an organization that takes artists and scientists to the landscapes where climate change is most visible. The hope is that the artists will communicate the science down to a human scale story. Climate change is most dramatically obvious in the Arctic and Antarctic and the polar regions. The tropics, it's more nuanced. It was interesting to see the scientists there, to, 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 to hear firsthand from the, the, these foot soldiers of climate change. Some of the expeditions from the Arctic yielded brilliant work, really stunning work. That brings the Arctic to you. You have these vast expanses of, mm. of white ice, and just to imagine it gone was very powerful. And so to see images of that, said, my God, how beautiful this can't go, and therefore that gets you emotionally in- involved. Climate change can't just be a scientific issue, because most of us too now, because we don't understand the science. It can't strictly be a political issue, because most of us feel disempowered, mm-hmm. and there's, there seems to be little we can do on a day-to-day basis. So it has to go beyond that and be a cultural problem too, one in which we react to it culturally, create a dialogue that encompasses more than just the scientific or the, or the political. By offering a cultural response to climate change, Cape Farewell aims to transform the issue into an emotional dialogue between humans and our environment. Bertinsky intends to do the same with his photography. I sat down with him in his Toronto studio. The work is like a 30-year lament for the loss of nature, showing that encroachment, showing that, that, that kind of way in which we're extending out into that raw wilderness and, and usurping it for our own purposes. Stills allow us to sit there and look at one frame and deconstruct it. It moves into a, an analytical part of our brain, and, and so we get to see the details. We get to record the moment in a way, you know, that that uh, I think embeds itself in our memory in, in a much richer way. So as a visual artist, that I'm always trying to find that kind of visual hook, the thing that will make something interesting. You know, as um, a wordsmith would interest, be interested in writing, you know, a novel where they're crafting the words. Yann Martel is using words and ancient mythology to explore the issue of climate change in our modern world. He used his experiences with Cape Farewell for inspiration. I'm doing a piece with the Montreal Symphony Orchestra to write a text that would accompany a, a composition of Beethoven called The Creatures of Prometheus. <laughs> you know, in the myth, in the mythology, Prometheus stole fire from the gods and right. brought it to humanity. Right. And I'm saying, perfect, we, we're using fire too much, fire metaphorically speaking, we're using it right. too much, yeah. and we're heating up the planet. So how do I speak with cl- well, climate change? Well, I, um, I use an existing story, mm-hmm. and I give it a new metaphorical sense. I'm using that myth to, to tell a different story this time. For Bertinsky, art adds something valuable to the environmental discussion that science does not. A sense of story, mystery, and personal discovery. That's what art can do, I think. It tells us our narrative, our human narrative, our stories. Science, it gets too myopic, and it tells us things about ourselves that can be brought in to the narrative. And, and so I think in a lot of ways I've tried to build that kind of, you know, the ch- process of discovery in my work and also this kind of tension of wonder and, and awe and, uh, you know, a, a ghastness, like, oh my God, look at the scale that we're, we're functioning at. Yeah. Every generation needs art, uh, mm-hmm. uh, not to sort of put into museums and to sort of you know pat ourselves on the back and be good and bourgeois about it. You need art because we need to, we need to, we need to understand who we are, where we are. That's our way of interacting with our environment. Before we economic creatures, or scientific creatures, or political creatures, or cultural creatures. So uh, yeah, we we constantly need art to interact with our environment, and as the environment changes, so will our art. Mm-hmm.